This is Avengers Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast. Maybe you're listening on my website at henrywalker.org under audio messages, or maybe you're listening at podpoint.com backslash Henry Walker, or maybe you're listening on my YouTube channel, New Life Revival International Henry Walker. I want to start a new message today talking about how the Father is positioning us for change, to bring that change for the better into our lives. But let's go to the Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Help people to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor in the mighty name of Yeshua by the blood of Yeshua. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, talking about positioning, how he wants us to be in the right place at the right time to get those blessings, to get that change that we've been looking for for some of us, for years and years. So don't be surprised when he moves you into a place, a position, where I never thought I'd be here. Now this position could be a change in location where you live. It could be a change on your job. It could be a change in the congregation you're going to. It could be a change in the ministry. Maybe you're a pastor and the father's saying, hey, I want you to start teaching the word. And not be a pastor. I never called you to be a pastor. He could be saying that to somebody out there. I never called you to be a pastor. I heard about this very famous teacher. He was serving 15 years as a pastor. And the father said to him, I want to bring you into the beginning of your ministry. He said, I've been pastoring for 15 years. But he said, I never called you to be a pastor. I called you to be a teacher of the word. So it's important that we allow the father to maneuver us where he wants us to be to get that blessing. In Luke chapter 1, most of you know about Zechariah and Elizabeth. They couldn't have any children. They had the parents of John the Baptist. In verse 24, And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months. That's very important. Saying, Thus had Yahweh dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. In verse 26, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from the father unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Yahweh is with you. Blessed art thou among women. In verse 31, he said to Mary, the angel did, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua. Here's a Hebrew lady, and the angel is telling her to call his name Yeshua. And he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest, and Yahweh Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And Mary said, How is this going to be? I don't know a man. In verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The spirit of the father shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that precious thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of the Father. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with the Father nothing shall be impossible. See, that made an impression upon Mary, because as you know, Elizabeth hid herself. Nobody knew that she had conceived except Zechariah and herself. Mary didn't know, so she knew that this angel was from Yahweh because of what he said. And as a result, Mary said in verse 38, Behold the handmaid of Yahweh, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And she ran with haste to Elizabeth's house. In verse 41, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Spirit of the Father. Not the tissue, the babe. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In verse 44, 
Lo, soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe again leaped in my womb for joy. Before I go further, we want to pray for the babies in the womb. This is a pro-life ministry, and the Father is prompting me to pray for the babies in the womb. Around 18 days, the baby's heart begins to beat. And around four months, the baby's heart is pumping about 25 quarts of blood per day. This is a life in the womb. Most scientists believe that life begins at conception. The College of Pediatrics believe that life begins at conception. The father is the agent of conception. The odds of us being conceived are 75 million to one. So the father had a hand in that, that's for sure. I just want to pray for the babies in the womb right now. Father, I ask you to touch the babies in the womb, Father. Bring them to a full birth. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. And if any of you out there had an abortion, repent, ask the Father to forgive you, and go on and follow him into purpose and destiny. But back in Luke chapter 1, as we mentioned, the babe leaped in her womb for joy as soon as Mary greeted her. And verse 45, And blessed is she that believed, this is Elizabeth talking to Mary, where there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from Yahweh. See, Mary had to be in a position for the Spirit of the Father to overshadow her. And she had to be away from Joseph, so she had to go to Elizabeth's house. And here is where the overshadowing took place. Verse 46, and Mary said, my soul does magnify Yahweh. The soul is the mind, will, and emotions. So the spirit of the Father is overshadowing her mind, will, and emotions. Verse 47, and my spirit had rejoiced in Elohim, my Savior. Now he's overshadowing her spirit. So it says Elohim is our Savior, but in Titus it says Yeshua is our Savior. Yeshua is the one sitting on the throne, Revelation 4.2. He's the Father manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. The Father was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into heaven. So now the Spirit of the Father is overshadowing her spirit, as I mentioned. Verse 48 for he had regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty had done to me great things, and precious is his name. So Elizabeth said in verse 45 that there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from Yahweh. Verse 49, Mary says, For he that is mighty has done, hath done to me great things. Between four, verse 46 and 48 is when that overshadowing took place, but only in a position where the Father wanted her to be. It got me the book of Judges, talking about positioning for change. There sure was a change in Mary's life. The Savior was conceived in her womb. But she had to be positioned properly away from Joseph into Elizabeth's house, and that's where, that's where the overshadowing took place. In Judges chapter 3, Judges right after Joshua, right before Ruth, talking about positioning for change. Every time the Israelites would serve Yahweh, everything would be fine. But once they turned their back on Yahweh, their enemies would bring them into bondage. In verse 12, Judges chapter 3, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of Yahweh, and Yahweh strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of Yahweh. If you don't want your enemies to succeed against you, surrender everything to the Father, especially your flesh. A lot of Father to mortify the deeds of, of your flesh, come into your spirit, make you more like Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of your life. You'll be totally protected by Him. And he'll work on you like he's working on me every day on that sanctification process, making us more like Yeshua, pointing out those things in our lives that should not be there. And all we have to say, Father, get rid of it, as he points them out to us. 
He's getting us ready for heaven. In verse 14, so the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. Maybe some of you out there don't know Yeshua. You haven't surrendered to the Father. And going by yourself for 18 years or longer, it's time right now. The set time to favor you is now if you surrender everything to him. In verse 15, but when the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh, Yahweh raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gara, a Benjamite, a man left-handed, which is very important, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. Again, when they turned their backs on Yahweh, the enemies would prosper against them, but then they would cry out for a deliverer, and the father would raise up a deliverer. In this situation, he raised up Ehud. In verse 16, But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges, just like the word, a sharp two-edged sword, of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his clothing upon his right thigh, which is very important. And since he was left-handed, they didn't check his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. Verse 21, And he had put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. The rest is pretty graphic. And Ehud left and said that the king is just sleeping. After a while, they couldn't wait any longer. The people outside, they checked. They found he was dead, but Ehud had escaped. The verse 28, And he said unto them, Ehud did, Follow after me, for Yahweh has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took the fords of Jordan toward Moab and suffered not a man to pass over and they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and escaped not a man. So you see, Ehud had to be positioned to bring about change. A change in his life, but also a change for the Israelites. They were in bondage for 18 years, but that bondage was over because somebody allowed the father to position him where probably not many people wanted to go. And he went right to the king. See, it's so important where the Father positions us. Man, we could bring thousands of people to him before the rapture if we allow him to position us. And sometimes it's maybe where we don't want to be, where we never thought we'd wind up. But that's just where he wants. Maybe you've been on your job for years and years and years, but he wants you to leave because you are needed elsewhere. He's got a position for you, a battle position, a job, an assignment, and also a blessing attached to it. But we don't serve him for blessings. We serve him because we enlisted in his army. But let's go to the book of Joel. Joel is toward the end of the Old Testament before Amos. You got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, right before Amos. I want to talk about us being in his army. We enlisted in his army when we surrendered everything to him. And it's not up to us to decide where we're going to be. It's up to him. Every general assigns his troops where he wants them to be. Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in verse 1. In my sanctified mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there had not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them, talking about his army, us, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots in the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, in verse 7. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and he shall not break their ranks. See, are you ready to move? where he wants you to be. Again, a general tells the truth where he wants them to be. We don't decide ourselves. 
the preparation that he has made in our lives is bringing us to the point where he is reassigning us, repositioning us maybe, where he wants us to be. We don't position ourselves. We belong to the general, the king of kings, the Yahweh of the universe, the ruler, the controller of the universe. Remember, everything was created by him and for him and by him. All things consist. Everything and everybody reports to him. In verse 8, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heaven shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall rejoice shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executed his word. He's strengthening us. Be strengthened right now. In the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? So the Father is getting ready to position us where we need to be. Where he has trained us for. Where he has equipped us for. Where he has strengthened us for. And the reason that we've been kept alive in these last days is to get into that battle position and allow him to do what he wants in and through our lives. But the most important requirement is to be on that sanctification process, as I mentioned. Surrender everything to him, especially the flesh. We can't control the flesh. Paul said in Romans 7, the things I don't want to do, I do. The things I do want to do, I don't do. Who is going to help me? But I thank the Father through Yeshua. Then he says in chapter 8, verse 1, There's now therefore no condemnation to me. I walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the Lord, the Spirit of life in Yeshua, had made me free from the law of sin and death. He also says in the same chapter that when temptation comes, the Spirit of the Father will quicken us to resist. And we need to turn our flesh over to him. So see, we're part of his army. Where is he going to lead us? And we'll see. But he's been preparing us. Where he is leading us, he assigned us before the foundation of the world, before there was ever time. So allow him to do so, to get that change in your life. Maybe some of you are hurting in your body, and he may lead you to a group of people, just a prayer group. And all of a sudden, this person says, hey, you know, I was suffering with the same thing you have, but this is what... The Father asked me to do, and look, it's all gone. You never know where he's going to lead you. Don't be concerned about change. Don't be afraid of change. And maybe the blessing or blessings that you're waiting for are in that new position. Just go to the left and go to Ezekiel with me. Ezekiel 17, talking about positioning for change. And don't be surprised if the Father uses you to take somebody's place. Somebody who cannot go all the distance with the Father. Some of you are wondering, why hasn't the Father used me the way he said he was going to use me? Well, that change is coming. And your main requirement, as I mentioned, is to surrender everything, your whole life to him. And let him come into your spirit, make you more like Yeshua every day. And bring the fruit of the spirit out of your life. Every day, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. All that fruit of the Spirit describes Yeshua. So when the Father uses you to minister to somebody, it's like Yeshua is doing it through you. And the people will recognize that. The Father is ministering to them in love and bringing more peace into their lives. And how you pray with them for so many hours, maybe, if necessary, They'll see that long suffering. One time I was ministering in the Bahamas, in Freeport, the Bahamas, and the service was over, but the father told me that he wanted to fill this lady who's part of the ministry with his spirit, baptizing her with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And so me and some people were praying for him, praying for her, and around 2.30 in the morning, she allowed the father to break through, and that beautiful event happened being filled with the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, and speaking in an 
heavenly language. It's so beautiful. But the Father moved through me with long suffering to stay there until that happened. Ezekiel 17. This is for some of you who, who are wondering, how is the Father going to use me like he promised? Those dreams I had. The set time to favor you is now. Psalm 102, verse 13. The set time to favor you is now. You'd be so surprised when the Father positions you and you show up, how he's going to use you in the gifts and the manifestations of the Spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, the working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. Maybe the Father never used you in the gifts, manifestations. I don't like the word gifts. It's the manifestations. It's not something that the Father gave to us. He uses us in these manifestations as he deems fit. Whatever he wants to accomplish in the person you're ministering to, he'll use you in these manifestations. Maybe one or all of them. But it's not a gift. It's not something that we possess. He manifests himself through us in those manifestations. Again, in a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kind of tongues, interpretation of tongues. So back in Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 24, again, he might position you to take somebody's place. Somebody who could not follow him all the way to the completion of the assignment. The verse 24, Ezekiel 17, And all the trees of the field shall know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree, have exalted the low tree. However he uses you, don't let pride come up. Have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree, and have made the dry tree to flourish. I, Yahweh, has spoken, have done it. Once he speaks it, it is done. Nobody can stop it. I'm going to read that again. He's bringing down a high tree. Some people that are lifted up in pride. He's exalted the low tree, the humble. Some people who are humble. He's dried up the green tree. And it made the dry tree to flourish. Last thing Yeshua said when he hung up there. But it is finished. I have a book on the bottom of my written message page called Noon. It talks about the different hours of the day when the Father moves the most. And it's one hour a day when his healing anointing is greater than any other hour. Remember again, the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. The 12 hours of the day are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 12 hours of the night are 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. You should have talked about the 12 hours in the day. So 3 p.m. is the ninth hour of the day. That's when Yeshua said it is finished for us. So be in his presence at that ninth hour and say, Father, I claim what you promised me, that it is done. They are done. It is finished. And so my book brings this out. Noon. Talks about the feast days. Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew. We need to follow him in his footsteps. This ministry goes back to our Jewish roots in Yeshua, what he taught the apostles, and what the apostles taught others. We don't go back to the ceremony, washings, the cleansings, and the laws, 600 and some laws. We go back again to what Yeshua wants us to go back and glean, learn, as he teaches us. It's just so sad that so many people find it so strange to mention the name Yahweh, Yeshua. That is his name. Yahweh is an action verb. That means when you surrender everything to the Father, and you call upon his name Yahweh, he actively moves on your behalf. His name means I am that I am. Whatever you need him to be after you surrender to him, he will be. And Yeshua is Yahweh, our Savior. Yah, Y-A-H, that's the family name. The Constantine brought so much junk into his form of Christianity 1,700 years ago. That's one of the things he wiped out. It was everything Jewish he wanted to take out. And he replaced the Sabbath, which sounds so Jewish, with Sunday, a day to worship the sun. I'm not saying you, you go to a congregation on Sunday worshiping the sun, but it's set up to replace the Sabbath, which is the fourth commandment, written with the finger of the Father. The same finger that wrote, Meeny, meeny, tiku, yufasen, 
to Belshazzar. It's the same finger that wrote the sins of the people who wanted to stone the woman taking adultery to death. It's the same finger. And in Isaiah 53, it talks about the arm of Yahweh. Yeshua is the arm of the Father. It's the only finger that the Father has. And what I am saying is that we have to get back to a Jewishness in Yeshua. Again, he is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew. And so the Sabbath is Friday night, 6 p.m. to Saturday, 6 p.m. It's when he wants to draw us sometime during that time into his presence where he refreshes us, encourages us, and gives us more power for the week that starts on Saturday at 6 p.m. It's important to get in his timing. Again, my book, Noon, brings that out. I also have another book on there. Is the Trinity really a mystery? Explaining the so-called mystery of the Trinity. So again, we're talking about the Father positioning us where he wants us to be in these last days, in these battle positions. You can see how Paul got knocked off the horse, on his way to destroy Christians, blinded, told to go to a place called Straight. And at that point in time, he was positioned to be healed by the Father using Ananias and being baptized by Ananias. And that started his destiny. That started his, his serving Yeshua. That started his assignment. But the Father is preparing us, preparing us for so long. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't choose your assignment. Don't choose your ministry. Allow him to choose it for you. He's anointed you, and everything you've been through has contributed to this anointing to do what he wants you to do, to be in the right place at the right time, and being able to, to allow him to minister to people, whole groups of people at one time maybe, or just one person at a time. It's his purpose right now in this pre-rapture season to bring us into purpose and destiny or battle positions, and all we have to do is let go and let him take us there. And something I mention on every podcast is that if your flesh is attacking you with impure thoughts, worry thoughts, fearful thoughts, anxious thoughts, say out loud, Yeshua, I thank you for that crown of thorns that was around your head. That was for me. That means my mind is protected by your blood. I only think your thoughts. And give those thoughts that your flesh is trying to give you to the Father. Let him deal with those thoughts. Another thing I want to bring to your attention, if you don't realize it, is that we feed the poor in Nassau, the Bahamas. And if you want to join us in that area of ministry to help us and want to donate for that purpose, you can go to my website at henrywalker.org and click on the donate button. Or you can go to podpoint.com backslash henrywalker and click on the donate button. Every gift is tax deductible. This is a 501c organization, New Life Revival International. And if the Father speaks to your heart, you will be blessed, and the people will be blessed even more. If you have any questions or any praise reports, you can email me at contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at henrywalker.org. I'll be so glad to hear from you. And if you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts, share subscribe, hit the like button, and remember, to next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than anything or anybody in the world.